Um, I also ordered the Helms Parkway of Education Primary and Special Voting Workshop Meeting for December 4th. The New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of the public bodies in which any business affecting their interests is discussed or acted upon. In compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act, the Highland Park Board of Education has caused notice for this meeting, setting forth the time, date, and location to be submitted for publication from Home News Tribune and Star Ledger, and posted on the board's website at least 48 hours in advance of this meeting. Members of the public who wish to address the board will be given the opportunity to do so before the board adjourns the evening. Can we uh, roll call, please? Mr. Reedy? Here. Ms. Casaldine? Here. Dr. Coleman? Ms. Gowan? Here. Ms. McFadden Dean Nicola? Ms. Bruce? Here. Mr. Roslevich? Here. Ms. Bargain? Ms. Warke? Here. Okay, let's believe really this. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We had uh, two communications this month, both from Abby, uh, uh, one related to the uh, traffic and late city to the schools and audio at our board meeting. We've done a lot of work tonight. Thank you to uh, our administration and our tech staff so that audio should be good tonight. Keep our fingers crossed that that's true, but a lot of effort to put in to get this right tonight. Um, we are starting off a little bit differently. There are, while this is a workshop meeting, there are a couple items that we need to vote on so that the school can move forward, the district can move forward on these items. Um, and we're going to do a public comment on those items specifically and then go forward with a regular workshop meeting. So the items that we need to vote on tonight um, is under curriculum and instruction, the approval of job descriptions for an MTSS um, instructional support coach and a supervisor of accounting. And uh, under finance, we are going to be voting on the awarding of a, uh, an insurance broker for our district. So first, I'm going to turn to the board to ask if the board has any questions on any of these, these specific items. Um, then we'll discuss from there, then we'll make the motion, and then we'll it. So then we'll do public comment, then we'll make motions. <laughs> so any questions on these um, special voting meeting items? No? All good? Um, okay, then... Uh, we're going to open the public comment. The County Park Board of Education welcomes public participation and has reserved this time for your comments. Board policies 0164 and 0167 establish and regulate the right of the public to participate in public meetings. Um, so if anybody in the public wants to comment on either of these voting meeting items, again, there's two job descriptions and the awarding of the insurance broker proposal. If someone has a question or a comment, uh, please raise your hand. Your virtual hand, since the is in the room that wants to speak on these topics. And seeing no comments, um, then we're going to make our motions to so move these uh, items. I do Allison will do curriculum instruction. Yes, under curriculum instruction. I move that the Board of Education accept the recommendation of the superintendent to accept the job descriptions of JD2770, MTSS Instructional Support Coach, and JD2775, Supervisor of Accounting. Second. Mr. Reedy? Yes. Ms. Casalda? Yes. Dr. Coleman? Yes. Ms. Gowan? Yes. Ms. Cruz? Yes. Mr. Roslevich? Yes. Ms. Barnum? Yes. Ms. Morgie? Yes. Okay, and then the second one of the, of the voting items is uh, the awarding of the insurance broker proposal. I move the Board of Education accept the recommendation of the superintendent to approve the reporting and award the following insurance broker proposal pursuant to NJSA 18A colon 18A-5A parentheses 10. <laughs> the jump below. Um, and this is for approving the uh, 
But the services of the health insurance broker Brown and Brown, um, per the, their proposal they submitted. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Mr. Reedy? Yes. Ms. Casalda? Yes. Dr. Coleman? Yes. Ms. Gowan? Yes. Ms. Cruz? Yes. Mr. Roslevich? Yes. Ms. Bardman? Yes. Ms. Warkey? Yes. Okay. Now we go back to our um, regular workshop agenda and we'll go to our student representative. And we are. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> over at Irving, um, they will be collecting Operation Snowflake donations on December 19th. Um, they are very thankful for the community and their ongoing support. Um, and they would also like to give a huge congratulations to Nicole Parra, um, the Teacher of the Year, and Michael Nassis, the Educational Service Professional of the Year. Over at Bartle, they would like to shout out Ms. Bernstadt, the Teacher of the Year, and Dr. Nizolik, the Educational Service Professional of the Year. As well. um, on December 12th, we'll be at the, they will have their fast family fitness night at 5 p.m. And on December 13th is their parent and guardian literacy night, also at 5 30 p.m. Uh, Bartle will be sending out some information on Operation Snowflake this week, um, and they encourage Bartle families to consider donating. Lastly, Bartle's winter concert will be on December 19th at 7 p.m. Over at the middle school, their teacher of the year is Ms. Rebecca Takis, um, and their service professional of the year is Ms. Jeannie Young. And their students uh, in the co student congress will be running a pack rally on Thursday, December 21st. Um, and they would like to see us still get more details in the conference. <coughs> on December 20th, they will also be having a decorating contest, um, and the theme will be Winter, winter Wonderland. The middle school invites students to join their first student speak up meeting on December 5th from 3 to 3.30 in the cafeteria right here. Uh, and they um, encourage students to come as it's an opportunity for students to talk about any issues or concerns they have at the middle school. Uh, and the student advisor will bring concerns back to the administration to discuss solutions to these problems. Over at the high school on Thursday, November 30th, Dr. Tanya Long and Mr. Rockfoot had a guest speaker, Judge Alberto Rivas, the criminal justice class and forensics class, had to hear from a sitting judge about his background and the courts and some interesting stories from his career. The class is looking forward to having more guests later in the year. Uh, the high school would also like to congratulate Mr. Rockfoot for his teacher of the year <laughs> and Ms. Lori St. George for the educational service professional of the year. HP Deck and Glow are still holding their um, apparel sale until December 5th, um, and it is to promote, promote both groups, and they can be purchased um, at the Google form that has been sent out. Uh, the Highland Park Choir is holding a gingerbread um, decorating contest on December 5th in the cafeteria from 6 to 8, and you can purchase one kit for $20 or two for $35. Glory was going to say there was some prize incentive, but I'm, I'm not too sure about that. <laughs> Um, the Red Cross Club is holding its annual blood drive on December 8th in the high school gym. Uh, students, teachers, or parents can sign up with the link that will be in the, the board bulletin. Makeup senior portraits are going to be held on December 12th, 13th, and 14th in the cafeteria in uh, room C2. And the class of 2025 is holding a holiday pop-up shop on December 17th in the high school gym. And I invite everyone to come out and get your last minute holiday shopping. And if you're interested in having a table, you can contact Ms. Houseward at jhouseward at hmschools.net. Um, as our discussion with paper tutoring has been prominent in the board meetings, and um, in person paper tutoring will be held every Tuesday and Thursday starting December 12th from 310 to 410 in the cafeteria. Um, and if you have any questions, you can contact Ms. Enderko or Mr. McCray. And lastly, the boys basketball team will have their first home game on December 15th, and their second game right after on December 16th. Uh, and the girls team will have their first game on December 18th in the high school gym. That's it. Thank you very much. Any questions uh, for Andrew? All those uh, things want just a quick comment that I want to congratulate you on the play this weekend. We went so close. <laughs>
questions or comments from the board? Just Andrew, I would really like to hear um, how the students felt about the open sessions with administration, if you could follow up on that um, okay. in future meetings. It's really great that they're getting the opportunities for um, to kind of meet in that way, so I'm excited to hear about how it goes. Awesome. I will definitely follow up on that. Okay. Thank you very much. We are going to move on to curriculum instruction, committee reports, and agenda items. So curriculum and instruction has not met since our previous meeting. We are meeting tomorrow. Um, the items that will be on the agenda for voting at our next meeting are field trips that's uh, attached, um, and the resolution to approve the following university graduate for students for teaching internship slash junior practicum slash observation um, for Dina Bucky. Uh, well, for Dina F, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your name. Um, and that is going to be for a Rutgers student under the subject of SEL and health curriculum. So we're very excited to discuss that tomorrow. Okay. Questions for curriculum? Pretty short. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Equity and excellence funding? We have not met since our last meeting. <laughs> okay. I guess the case probably for our committees because finance and facilities is the same. We're meeting this week. Um, and it is, without a doubt, the shortest <laughs> agenda for finance facilities. Um, we have a resolution to, we will have a resolution to approve travel and related expense reimbursements for what's attached. Um, resolution to approve an additional contractor for physical therapy evaluations. Um, it's the Princeton Center for Educational Evaluate Assessments. And uh, one additional out-of-district placement that will be, is on the agenda for, um, for our approval at our next meeting. <coughs> Questions? Okay, right along, personnel. And I think we're going to go with action report today. Okay, let's Here we go. Yes, we met on November 29th. Um, a be non confidential items. Uh, I sent around my very minimal minutes because uh, Dr. Dr. Sus Dr. Sus is it Suska? Suska. Suska. Dr. Suska uh, presented fairly detailed board notes for us this week. Um, but of the publicly discussable personnel items, um, we are uh, being asked to approve an after school program supervisor. This is a position that's required in order for the program to be licensed as a New Jersey child care agency. And the many benefits of that include that we would be eligible to apply for state subsidies on behalf of our parents. And these are subsidies for which the district applies, not the parents, which is a change from what we discussed in connection with Catholic Charities. So the parents will not have the burden of going and filling out 18,000 pages of paperwork. We will, which is much easier for us. <coughs> um, let's see. We talked a little bit about uh, Ms. Is it Cherko? Cherko, the computer science teacher, who's coming on board. Oh um, no, Ms. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. I have the wrong. Yes, Ms. <laughs> I, I, I read the agenda wrong. I'm sorry. Do we know the name of the? Uh, so we approved for our new computer science teacher that is starting. Um, so this is so. Whose name is? I just forgot. I'm so sorry. I have her name once now. <laughs> she hasn't started teaching with the students. She's right. teaching at the beginning of the semester. I apologize. Yes, with age. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I can't so, I apologize. Mrs. Chirico, of course, is not the new computer science teacher, but our new computer science teacher is uh, getting started at work. We hired her a little bit before the start of the year, the, the new, before the start of the winter semester. Um, she is developing new classes, and Dr. Suska expects to have new curriculum items on the agenda at some point soon, including things like video game design, which would be very exciting. Um, we talked about, uh, let me see if I have the name correct here, Nicole Hodge, uh, is being recommended to teach two additional courses for a staff member on parental leave. Is it is it okay for us to talk about the name of the staff member? Just don't, no. Okay. Um, never mind. I wanted to share some good information about the program, but out of respect for confidentiality, I will not share that at this time. Um, about the program this teacher teaches. Let's see. And we talked a, a good amount about communications. Um, I know parents have had some frustrations around communications. Um, including uh, the receipt of multiple identical emails from different schools about the same topic. This is, of course, very difficult to coordinate 
Um, you know, we don't have a communications department who can sort of look at every school's email before they go out. But uh, Dr. Susco is working with building administration to try to streamline communications as well as possible, um, including uh, an ongoing project of trying to reduce the number of emails that have important or time-sensitive information in an attached PDF. We don't want people to get an email that says, you know, for exam time, see attached PDF. And I think the district has been really improving in that regard. Um, but of course, it's difficult because there are a million people sending out emails. Um, and Dr. Susco reminded us of the backpack that is available on the website uh, for community announcements and other sort of non-critical announcements. That's something parents can check. And we talked about how it would be important for the administration to really advertise that proactively, because even some board members uh, only recently found out about the backpack. <laughs> so uh, as much as it may be in people's signature lines that may have been announced at some point, we parents are sometimes a little oblivious. So hopefully that will happen. And that will reduce the number of community announcements uh, that, that go out on an individual basis. And that is all I have to report. Can I add something? Of course. <laughs> um, so I wanted to uh, just follow up. Number two on the personnel is the approval of the retirement for Michael Lasseter, oh. our beloved high school principal. I just wanted to share that Mr. Lasseter. Well, we acknowledge all of our retirees at the end of the year. Yes. However, uh, for the board's uh, reference, Mr. Lasseter has been a member of the Highland Park community for 29 years, serving as an eighth grade uh, social studies teacher, assistant principal, and principal. We're going to miss him. Yes. Um, and I, I apologize. I think that could actually be the agenda. Yes, that was okay. the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little too quick. No, that was just a big one. That was a big one. No, that, that was a big one. <laughs> okay, so personal communication. Um, I'm not going to go through all of these, just the ones that are non self explanatory. Most, most uh, sort of significant is Mr. Lasseter's retirement, of course. Let's see. Anything that is not? Uh, Ashley, number five, Ashley Lubas. That's our program supervisor that Dr. Susco is recommending we appoint to make us eligible for licensing. Let's see, we have some number seven, some new sections. Um, Ah, Nicole Hodge will be teaching Intro to Music Therapy and Intro to Acoustic Guitar as a lead replacement. And we did talk a little bit about pers personnel, about how our music program seems to be going really strongly and have more participants. And we uh, asked the administration if uh, at some point they could compile uh, data to answer the question whether the later start time at the high school has helped with this. I don't know that we could do that this year, it might take a couple of years to. Because I think we also have some new classes this year, which may you know, compl complicate the analysis. But anyway, it's great to see that more people are getting involved in music. Um, let's see. And oh, there's one other one I wanted to highlight. The accounting assistant. Is she the accounting assistant on here? Yeah, one of the We did discuss it as an agenda item at our meeting. Oh, I know. That's why I was looking for it on the... So it's under. It was, it was in the beginning of the meeting. Of the oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> That's what we just voted on. Isn't it? Yes. 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 <laughs> I was paying attention to that. All right. Uh, looking good. All right. My bad. <laughs> Perhaps I should have spoken about it ahead of time. Because, yes, we did, just so the public is aware that, um, you know, we're not completely spaced out here, we did have a committee meeting in which we discussed this. And uh, I was perhaps just a little brain dead out here. I believe that that concludes my <laughs> Unless I forgot anything else. <laughs> and I said we were really going to miss your committee reports. <laughs> <laughs> They've been so organized. I don't know. Thank you. Thanks, Brad. Questions from the board on any guidance? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and then policies and regulations. There, everything here is on for second degree. Um, so we will be voting next time that on um, sick leave policy, school threat assessment, for curricular activities, examination for cause, and attendance policy, right to privacy, um, eligibility of resident, non resident students, uh, education of homeless, and um, a food service. Those are all policies that we have approved for first reading. Everybody to read them before the next uh, meeting or actually get a vote. If you have questions, it's always best for that. Um, I'll go back to public comment there. 
I mean, my understanding of these policies, um, uh, again, is that they're not new changes in school practice and procedure for the most part. In fact, possibly for all part. They're to bring us into compliance with the New Jersey statutes and New Jersey regulations or guidance, and then occasionally there'll just be clerical changes where they type, try to tighten up the language, sometimes successfully. So nobody should think that we are suddenly implementing a new policy for the eligibility of resident, non resident, res eligibility of resident, non resident students. I hadn't realized that the title sounds ridiculous. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> E1J. So people who are not officially resident, but they are living in that district because they're. No. Gotcha. Uh, and that's, that, that's true, right? We, like, we didn't write these policies, right? They come to us, and then we've done them in the past, and just updated based on recommendations from the stress estimate. And we typically, um, at least in the past, we typically approve them um, as long as they're in general line with our district principles. Because it makes it very difficult if uh, the trust estimate comes up with another change, you know, in six months' time, it's hard to compare the two documents. If ours is very different um, from the stress estimate original, right. if that makes sense. Um, certainly, if there, if this, if the policies involved substantive changes to our practice and policy, if they're not required, then of course, on occasion, we have changed them. Great. Okay, I think we're going to go public comment, and then. Um so public comment, the Highland Park Board of Education welcomes public participation and has reserved this time for your comments. Board policies 0164 and 0167 establish and regulate the right to public participate in public meetings. Um, so if you would like to comment on anything on the agenda or otherwise, um, feel free to raise your hand. I was able to do a tour for the parents. That was really reassuring people. 